What up, guys? What's good? This is the MSL, which is the Mitt Stately Weekly Podcast. Hey, guys, we cover Harvest Preparatory School Athletics. Keep you posted and updated on all things Harvest Prep. And uh, we'll be taking you around the league, but not today. We're just going to just keep you focused on what the Harvest Prep basketball team is doing. And uh, with all the activity going on last week, uh, we got to keep you updated. So uh, with that being said, hey, guys, give us a hit. Hit us up on Twitter at uh, MSL Weekly, uh, Facebook.com slash MSL Weekly. Uh, or you can hit me up at, uh, on the IG at Willie Stimmage Photography or just drop me an email at info for Willie at gmail.com. That's info for Willie at gmail.com. Hey, let's jump right into it. Let me just start out by saying uh, I was watching the Ohio State Buckeyes basketball team. I mean, they really surprised a lot of people. Uh, Coach Chris Holtman uh, really brought these guys in. They bought into the system. They was coachable, and uh, they really liked what the guy was doing. And he actually, you know, they was rolling pretty good at a, a record of 9-0 and and until they ran up on Penn State at Value City Arena. And that Penn State hit that last shot that really – took the air out of the uh, arena. So uh, Penn State brought Ohio State down to 9-1 uh, and one in the conference. But, you know, Ohio State was rolling pretty good. They was, Now that they was ranked 13 in the AP at coaches poll, with that, that, with that loss, it dropped them down to 17th in the AP and 18 in the coaches. Uh, so with that being said, I just want to just ship that to the uh, Harvest Prep Harvest Prep Warriors uh, jumping out to a big undefeated uh, fifteen and zero. Uh, you know, so you can't really look down on no team, not right now, because we are rolling pretty good, and uh, you can't take no team lightly. I don't care if it's Burn Union, Fisher Catholic, Millersport, can't take no team lightly. You got to come and bring your A game, and once you get a little cushion, hey, hey, your third, your third stream. Second string, those guys can get out there and get their foot wet. You know, just just, just get you know just get the feel of the game. You know, because you we gonna need all hands on deck coming down the stretch, uh, and it's coming pretty soon. Uh, Friday will be we be in the February, and you know March Madness, and it's mad it's it's a mad, it's madness in March. That goes for college, high school, uh, all of it in March Madness. So. Uh, just jump right into it. Take you. They, they, they Harvest Prep is. T- they took full control of uh, the Mid State League Cardinal Division, uh, and then uh, last week they played four. You know, kudos to Harvest Prep. They played four games in five days due to some inclement weather. Uh, it pushed a lot of these games back, and so uh, they had some league games against Millersport, Fisher Catholic, and then. Uh, uh, they went on to play a couple other schools. Uh, I think I got them in my other notes here, but yeah. So uh, uh, they played four four games in uh, five days, and they won each 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 one of those games. We're gonna break that down here shortly. Uh, this might be Harvest Prep's best team in the last five years. I mean, this I looked at man, these guys are loaded. I mean. Uh, they're loaded, so this might be the uh, the best team. This 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 to me is their best team I've seen. You know, as far as size and depth, I mean, everybody can ball on that team. Everybody, I mean, if you take the first unit out, the second unit could play anybody's first unit. You know, and these, these this, this might be their best team. You know, uh, in years, uh, so the Warriors have. They got a mix, a great mix of physical physical guard play. They uh they got sharp shooting on the wings, and they got the athletic uh CJ Pena uh, in, in the middle, and sometimes he makes this team go. I know this. Uh, I look at body language, man. This guy uh, once he get in that groove, he gets to, he gets everybody else in that groove. So you know that's that's good for a leader. Uh, there's a strong chance uh, this team will be. 22 and 0 heading into the district tournament and it might be because uh i got some remaining games and look at the remaining schedule i don't think nobody could touch these guys i mean like i said you can't take no team for granted but just looking at it on paper 
I don't think nobody can touch these guys from now to the last game of the year until uh, they get into district, district, district games. So, you know, in, in Harvest Prep, they have to keep pushing the tempo and transition. I mean, when they, when they, when they get out and start running, I mean, it is, it's great basketball. I mean, you know, and uh, even, like I say, even the second unit can play anybody's first unit. And uh, they got great bench uh, productivity. I mean, I look at these guys come off the bench. I mean, they they can actually, you know, they can actually compete with anybody. When I seen them guys beat Wellington in the first game, that was the indication that it's going to be a great season. And then uh, just last week, we went on to Wellington, and they beat – they came from behind and beat these guys again, and so that just say, you know what? That that was the uh, actual uh, spark that's going to take them into the tournament. You know, after, after beating those guys, and I I, I kind of like that. You know, the way they're going now. Let me run you through some of these games here. Uh, Monday, uh, the twenty second, Harvest Prep took on Millersport, and the final score was one fourteen to fifty as a and the only bright spot for Millersport was Zane Purvis. And I was sitting on the sideline. I was telling her, watch this guy, Zane Purvis. This guy, this guy is crafty. He's witty. And he can get his he can get his buckets. And he did get his buckets. He scored 33 points on that Harvest Prep. Well, I guess Harvest Prep. Uh, but he couldn't get no other production because I think the second highest score was Stephen Berry at six. And uh, his brother, Mason Purvis, had only had four. And everybody else didn't, you know, Zane had 33 of the 50 points that they scored. So that was all your scoring right there. For Harvest Prep, uh, So Hines had five. Jamari had, Doe had four. Uh, C.J. Piggy had 13. Abonte Duncan had 11. C.J. Anthony had 21, which is, he was a leading scorer. Brandon Beavers was six. Uh, Ralph Robinson with eight. Isaiah Cumlin with 11. Daniel uh, had six. Andrew Tate had 12. Raymond Robinson got in on the action. He scored two points, and Elijah Glenn had 15. And uh, you know, there's some of these. A lot of this bench play is uh, uh, is critical when it comes to you know when it's coming down to the stretch. So we're gonna need uh, we're gonna need this bench play for these. Uh, we're gonna be, need some bench production from the Harvest Prep bench. Uh, Tuesday, uh, January 23rd. Uh, Harvest Prep went down to Chillicothe. Uh, I think Chillicothe is D1, I believe. I'm not for sure, but I believe they are. And they actually beat Chillicothe 86-77 on Tuesday. First game was on Monday. They beat Millersport. Second game was on Tuesday. Back-to-back games uh, was on Tuesday. The, uh, the Cavaliers from uh, Chillicothe only shot 52% from the floor. They hit, a tr- they hit uh, 13 out of 20 from the three-point line. They put four players in double figures, only committed 13 tor- turnovers on that on Tuesday night. But it be, it would be safe to uh, assume that uh, Chillicothe had a victory when you see those kind of numbers. But the only problem was they ran up on Harvest Prep. <laughs> so those numbers didn't mean nothing. Uh, and they failed to Harvest Prep 86-77. Uh, the Warriors... Are the real deal, and their unbelievable depth and shooting talent uh, really uh, was a key to the game. Harvest Prep uh, also scorched the Nets with fifty-seven percent from the floor, including twelve of twenty from three-point land. Uh, nine Warriors uh, scored five in double figures. Uh, Harvest Prep led by eight at halftime, and fourteen they led by fourteen after three quarters. Uh, Chilla Coffee player. Chillicothe played a very good game and would never go away. Perhaps their best deep offensive night of the year. They put four players in double figures. <laughs> uh, Bra- uh, Brandon Mom Mom I guess that's how you put it. M a u g h m e r. He scored seventeen points and Will Roderick uh, season high fourteen. Jason Benson had ten. Uh, but it was the harvest prep balance was just too much uh, for Chilla Coffee. So let me just give you the scores of uh, just just to break down the stats here uh, for harvest prep. So Hines at eleven, CJ Pink had uh, twenty, uh, CJ Ant- <coughs> excuse me, CJ Anthony had sixteen, Sean Peterson had two, 
Brandon Beavers with 14, Isaiah Cumberland with 5, uh, Daniel uh, had 3, Andrew Tate had 5, Elijah Glenn had 10. And the lead scorer for Chilla Coffee is Jay Marmer, I guess how you pronounce that, which had 23 points. I guess he has a, he has a brother there too, but... But like I said, it was. I'm looking at one, two, three, four, five. There were five guys in double figures, but it wasn't enough. Harvest Prep went on with the victory. Uh, Thursday night, January 25th, Harvest Prep took uh, went up to Fisher Catholic. Uh, they beat Fisher Catholic 83 to 60. I think they didn't, they really didn't play their best game, but they they came out with the victory. Any victory is a good victory. Uh, Daniel Turner. Was the leading scorer for Fisher Catholic was 17. Uh, Zach Schaefer had 13 for Fisher Catholic in the losing effort. And for Harvest Prep, So Hines uh, netted 17 points. C.J. Piggy had 20. Christopher Anthony had 15. Avante Duncan had 3. Sean Peters had 2. Bryce Beavers with 9. Brandon Beavers with 3. Osley Cumlin with 8. And uh, Elijah Glenn with 6. And those are your numbers for Harvest Prep as a beat Fisher Catholic on the Thursday. Uh, then coming up on the end of the week, Friday, uh, Harvest Prep took on Fairford Christian at home. Harvest Prep defeated uh, Fairford Christian 106-39. to 39. Wow. Uh, the lead score for Fairford Christian was uh, Caleb Collins with 11 points, and everybody else didn't even break the, in double digits. So he was your only light spot uh, for Fairfield Christian. Uh, for uh, Harvest Prep, So Hines had eight. Claudio Pena had six, 16. Abonte Duncan with three. C.J. Anthony had 21. Sean Peterson with five. Bryce Beavers with two. Brandon Beavers with eight. Ralph Robinson had five. Isaiah Cumlin with 13. Daniel N Y A R K O. I can't pronounce his last name, but he had ten. Andrew Tate had five. Raymond Robinson had four. And Elijah Glenn had six. And you had a, a slew of guys that got in on this ball game. I believe this this is the whole team scoring. Everybody on the team scored. Everybody. That's how deep the bench is. We're gonna need all those guys come postseason, uh, playoff, uh, district and regional finals, and 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 hopefully the state finals. So, uh, with that being said, guys, we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, uh, we'll give some stats on uh, individual lead scores for Harvest Prep, uh, the Dispatch Coaches Poll, the AP State Poll, and uh, the uh, standings as of, right, uh, as of this moment. So, uh, with that being said, guys, this is the Men's State League Weekly. We're going to take a quick break. and We'll be right back. Okay, guys, we are back. Uh, this is the Men's State League Weekly Podcast. My name is Willie Stimmons, your host. And uh, we're going to look at some regular season l- leaders, scoring leaders, I guess that's what you want to call it. Oh, well, let's just say the team. Let's just say the team stats. Uh, C.J. Pena, out of 14 games, he's averaging 22 points a game. With a season high of 31 points, uh, don't know what team he scored at home, but that was a season high. C.J. Anthony, out of 13 games, uh, he's averaging 21.8 points a game. Sol Hines is averaging 11.6 points a game. Elijah Glenn is averaging 10.3 points a game. Brandon Beavers is averaging 9.9 points a game. Uh, let me go through these guys' season high here. Uh C.J. Anthony season high was thirty three. I guess that that was against Wellington because I was there. So high season high was nineteen points. 
Elijah Glenn's season high was 15 points. He's averaging 10.3 points a game. Brandon the Beavers, uh, 9.9 points a game. His season high was 22. Isaiah Cumberland, uh, 9.7 points a game. His season high was 13. Andrew Tate, uh, 7.3 points a game. His season high was 12. Abate Duncan, uh, 7 points per game. His season high was 18. Sean Peterson, 6.6 points a game. His season high was 16. Ralph Robinson, 6.5 points a game. His season high was 8. And Daniel Narco, I guess I'm just going to say that. I know I butchered his name up, but I'm just going to say it anyway. Uh, 6.3 points a game. His season high is 10. Jamari Doe, 3.5 points a game. His season high was 9. Bryce Beavers, uh... 3.4 3.4 points a game, season high 11, and Raymond Robinson uh, scoring three points per game. His season high was four points. So uh, just moving right along. Uh, Miss State League Cardinals standings as of today. Overall, Harvest Prep is 15 0. They are 9 0 in the conference. Fisher Catholic is 9 5. They are 7 2 in the conference. Wellington is eleven and four. They are six and two in the conference. Burn Union is eleven and three. They are four and three in the conference. Bishop Rosecrans is four and nine. They are three and four in the conference. Bedford Christian is six and nine overall and two and six in the conference. Grove City Christian is five and ten. They are two and seven in the conference. And Millersport is four and thirteen. They are zero and nine in the conference. So they has not won a conference game. Uh, dispatch polls, Division Three Harvest Prep is 15 and 0. The second team with 82 points. Uh, second team in the Division Three is Alpha Centric, uh, 12 and 4 with uh, 70 points. Wellington uh, is 11 and 4, 64 points in third. Uh, Bishop Reddy is uh, 14 and 1, 42 points. Fifth is uh, Columbus Alpha Centric. <laughs> 14 and 0, uh, Columbus Academy, I'm sorry. Columbus Academy, uh, 14 and 0, 40 points. And number six is Northmore, 14 and 1, and 22 points. That's the dispatch coaches poll. But the AP State poll for Division Three Harvest Prep, is uh, 15 and 0 with 154 points. Ottawa Glen- Glendorf, 15 and 0, 138 points. Third is Cincinnati Deer Park, 13 and 0, 115 points. Fourth is uh, Levittsburg, uh, 12-0, 111 points. Fifth is Oak Hill, 14-0, 78 points. Uh, Bishop Reddy is uh, six. Versailles is uh, seven. Oregon Stretch is uh, eighth. Columbus Academy is ninth. Wellington is tenth. And Northmore is uh, eleventh. Uh, yep, that's it. That's all. That's the AP state polls uh, for Division Three. Okay, Harvest Prep remaining games uh, tomorrow. They're at uh, Burn Union, seven thirty tip. Thursday, uh, the first of February, uh, Bishop Rosecrans comes to the cave to take on Harvest Prep. Saturday, we'll take a trip down to the Quick and Loans Arena to take on Horizon Science. Harvest Prep, we're taking on those guys at the queue. And then uh, Friday, uh, February the 9th, Grove City Christian comes into the cave to take on Harvest Prep. Tuesday, uh, February the 13th, Harvest Prep will be at Millersport. Uh, Friday, uh, February the 16th, Harvest Prep will be hosting Fair, uh, Fisher Catholic in the cave. And Saturday, which is the last game of the year, February the 17th, Pleasant will be taking on Harvest Prep uh, at home at the cave. Hey guys, that's a wrap for today. Uh, I'm out. Of, I'm just gonna just update you. I don't have anything else from the Mid State League. It was so much going on at Harvest Prep. I had to get you caught up there. So uh, uh, it's all about prep. <laughs> so with that being said, thank you guys for listening. Uh, thank the Ohio High School Athletic Association and the. Ohio Prep Sports Writers Association for allowing me to be a member and shed light on the Harvest Prep Warriors on the Mid-State League. Most of 
a league that don't get that much recognition. But, you know, I do what I can, uh, need your feedback, and we could do things a little better so we can all work together. Uh, with that being said, guys, uh, that's a wrap for today. Thank you guys for listening. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, my name is Willie Stimmich, and uh, have a great week.